Hello, this is Steph. Today we're going to see the first tutorial of the series that we compiled the other time. So the other time we said how to configure uh, the whole thing and how to work with this uh, uh, system. And little by little, I'm uh, fixing the tutorials. So there were the old version. So now I'm updating to the newest version. So the updated FMPEG version that is going on in this uh, period, 2024. And now we see the first tutorial of the series. So we start with the very basic things. So how to extract the frames and uh, how to push them in a file. So we're going to see Ubuntu, Visual Studio Code, and now we can get started. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio Code and uh, the first thing that uh, we can do is to run the program. So to run the program, we need first to compile it. And uh, here the configuration must be this thing. So in the make file tools, make sure that you have it installed. We saw this in the previous video. We have a configuration, set it to default. Build target, at the moment, uh, we take uh, the tutorial, the uh, tutorial 01. And uh, launch target will be the tutorial 01. And the rest can remain like this. Then you click the button right here to make the video, the, to make the program. And in the end, you should have the executable ready to be run. So there might be some warnings, but uh, don't worry about this. And uh, right here, you should have a the window ready to be saying that uh, everything went all fine. Okay, so here the process is finished. So we can go back and type a key to uh, exit. And now what you can do within Visual Studio Code is to click on the run and debug. So here we have... Uh, the configuration GDB launch, so we can launch the program. And uh, I don't have any breakpoints, so the program should be executed as it is. And uh, if you see, after a while, after the program is executed, so now the time that the debugger must run and everything. Okay, the program has exited. So we have uh, five uh, frames. So frame one, frame two, frame three, th frame four, and frame five. If we take a look at the frames individually, so here we don't see anything, but uh, let's say these are the raw version of the first five frames that make up this video. So if we take a look at uh, the folder where they have been saved, you will see that these are the first five frames. So let me open them with GIMP. Sorry that I'm in the virtual machine, so the it's not the most performing thing ever. And uh, here we go. This is uh, the first frame. Then we have the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So the difference is very subtle but uh, that's uh, what it is. So the video doesn't change so much from frame to frame. And so this is it. Okay, so let's get started with the analysis of uh, the source code of the Toria 01. So we start with the inclusion of the libraries. So here we have AV codec to manage the stream, AV format to manage the containers, and SW scale, that's the thing that we're going to see later. We go, it, it seems strange because it seems like that it's dealing with uh, the uh, scaling filter, but uh, it doesn't work only on that point of view. We're going to see later. There's also STD, STDIO, so the standard input and output, so to manage the messages that we want to want to give the user just in case there were um, errors or everything was uh, successful. And uh, at the moment, there is also... Uh, um, function, say frame, we're going to see it later. That is the function to save uh, the um, 
frames coming out of the video file and store them in the, the PPM file that we just generated. So here we have uh, the main with the usual argc and argv, with argc the number of parameters and uh, argv the parameters themselves. Here we say that if the length of argv is less than two, so we need at least two parameters in the um, command line, we have a please provide a movie file, so everything uh, like this. And uh, here in the beginning, so for the people who work with uh, FMPEG uh, up to some years ago, up to version four, I guess, we have uh, the AV register all. What does the AV register all? This was uh, uh, the um, loading of all the list of codecs available. Now at the moment, since version four, it is not uh, needed. So this is uh, now commented out only for that purposes, in fact, uh, not useful anymore since version 4. Now, first of all, we're going to open the file. We have uh, the P format context, that is uh, this AV format context that it needs to be allocated with the proper function. And uh, it's going to be allocated, uh, there's an error message. So um, I'm going to summarize that there's an error message as soon as uh, this uh, is going to fail. And also, since this procedure will be adopted with all the things we're going to do later, so I don't want to repeat the things so much. Otherwise, so the video is boring by itself. I don't want to get it more boring. And uh, so we have, uh, after that, after the allocation of the context, we have uh, the open file. So this will open the file directly and will open the file with the path that we have uh, in the uh, first common line, uh, the second common line argument. And uh, it will load everything in the format context. Then we're going to retrieve the stream information. So we're going to see which, uh, so what we're going to deal with. And uh, we are going to check the codec and the parameter, the codec and the codec parameters. And uh, the codec and the codec parameters are taken out from all the streams available in the format context. So we might have a video with audio and uh, or video, multiple videos and multiple audio. In this case, we select the first video stream. So in this case, we have a uh, fact a video stream uh, that is set to minus one that is a value that is not uh, wanted in fact uh, there is uh, the escape right here and uh, we have the codec parameters that are loaded uh, in this uh, um, in this piece of code so we are giving the video stream as soon as it is found out with uh, the proper index that is in this for loop among all the streams available and we get the codec parameters out of the format context. So we have the stream and the codec parameters with this field codec, codec par. The P codec it is uh, retrieved using the um, codec ID in the codec parameters. And we have this AV find decoder that will retrieve the real codec that we want to use. As soon as something is found, it will break the loop. And so we're going on to the next step. And the next step is to allocate the, so to get a pointer to the codec context. Before we had the format context, now we have the codec context. And we have this uh, uh, method, we have this function, av codec alloc context tree. Presumably there were other uh, codec context. And so this is, uh, I guess, the third version of this, uh, all three types, three modes, three ways to uh, allocate the context for the codec. This is the most recent. And uh, then we're going to take the parameters to the context. So we're going to fill the codec context with the parameters that we found earlier. We have this AV codec parameters to context p codec context with the p codec parameters that we had before. And now finally, you can open the stream. So we have a AV codec open to with the p codec context and a p codec with the, the escape error, just in case this thing doesn't work. Now we have the format that is retrieved. 
We have the codec that is retrieved. We have the parameters, so we know how to open the stream. We know how to get out the frames. So now we're going to allocate a video frame. And here we have this AV frame with this AV frame, uh, with the allocation of the uh, frame. And uh, then we have the packet. The packet is uh, like a, a, so a piece, let's say, of a frame that uh, needed to be taken out of the uh, stream in order to populate the frame itself. Now, this is uh, the input frame. The one that we have after pframe RGB is uh, the output frame. So we're going to take the input into the output. So we take from the video file, the frame that is pframe, and then we are going to save what we have in pframe into the pframe RGB. So we allocate it the same way we had before. So AV frame alloc, same method. And here we have uh, this uh, SWS context. So this is uh, the scale context. Usually it is done for filtering. Here, what we're going to do is a simple color space conversion because uh, by default, we have the data that come as uh, uh, YUV or uh, Y, so YCBCR. And uh, we want uh, as output uh, the RGB. So we pass from YCBCR, YUV into RGB. Here we set the number of frames to process. So the numbers of frames to process here is equal to five. If you want to change it, you can. So I want to take only the first five frame as it was in the original tutorial. So if you want to change this number, you are free to do it. And then we are resetting the loop to zero because this will be used in this internal loop that why we read frames. In this case, uh, it is a while then uh, we are going to break after if it is uh, um, when it finished. So we have uh, these uh, AV read frame with this uh, form a context M packet. So you need these two parameters to take out the frame. And uh, here we have the uh, so the limit, the break limit. So if we are bef before the uh, frames to process, we can go on. Otherwise, uh, we stop. So here we take out a packet out of uh, the video file and we say, is this uh, about the stream we are uh, looking at? So the stream index is uh, belonging to the video we are looking at. If it is, we go on. Otherwise, uh, we don't do anything. So we're going to decode the video frame with uh, this method. In this case, this is the new thing that is in this... Uh, um, in a fmpeg av codec send packet and then later there is uh, the receive frame so there is this passing of a packet from one way the input to the um sorry there's a passing from uh, uh, like server and client so we have the send and receive from the uh, input and the output then uh, here okay these are all error management and so if we have the full finished frame, so here we are composing the frame until we have uh, the full frame. So if we have a full frame, that is uh, because uh, the frame finished variable that is uh, right here is uh, uh, not uh, with a value that is below zero, or it, it is not of this kind of AV error or end of file, we are going on making up the frame. Once the frame, once the frame is made up, once the frame is fully composed, we are going to allocate the output frame. So we're going to allocate it using the data that are in. So these are the input and the size. Let's say line size is how many rows we have. So how many with the height of the video, basically. And uh, here we have uh, the uh, data as output and also the size as output, as we can say. Then uh, we have the size as width and height coming out from the codec. So this is the input and uh, which is the color space we want to use. 
so here we use uh, the um, the conversion. So this is the process of conversion between the input that is a uh, YCBCR YUV into RGB, and this is the process of conversion. So here now we have the frames from the YCBCR into the RGB, and then in the RGB we take this frame in RGB, and we are going to save the frame. So we go up to the function that we had in the beginning that we skipped before. And here we are going to open an output stream with a file name that is being decided by the um, this thing. So here we're going to take the, um, the name of the frame based on the counter that we have. In this case, uh, it is uh, the counter plus one. So it is... Uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, no, zero, one, two, three, four. We open the file, and uh, just in case there's an error, we're going to get out with an error. And uh, here we put the header of uh, the um, PPM file. The PPM file requires a P6. B, so in other, uh, to in other sites, you see P5. It depends if you have a, a color frame or a or, um, uh, grayscale frame. If it is a color frame, you have it with a P6 in the beginning. If you have a, a grayscale, sorry, grayscale P5, color P6. In this case, we want it in color, so it is P6. With width and height and values that are up to 255. The values that we are expecting. After, we are going to write the pixel data. So, as an S, we have uh, the data inside. So, here... We have uh, the data put as stripes, as you can see, so we're going with the height, and uh, we're going to put line by line all these uh, bytes, and in the end, we close the file. As soon as the, all the frames are done, we are going to unreference and uh, remove and free all the memory dedicated to all the things that we used. So we open the packet and we close it, we close the context, we close the input and the output frame, we close the codec, and we close the format. So this is a good manner to avoid memory leaks all around, and then we return to zero. So this is uh, the basic way to work with, FM, with FMPEG. The rest will be built up upon this uh, knowledge that we did. So I hope in the um, next tutorial we don't get so much in detail with all the things that we've done in uh, the first in this first tutorial but um, we see the differences between this piece of code and what we're going to see next okay so we reached at the end of this first tutorial the next time i'm going to see the second and so on with all the others and we're going to see the differences between what is in this and uh, uh, the next and uh, so if you reached up to this point uh, thank you very much and uh, please like share and subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified about the next videos i'll be releasing and for the moment uh, i greet you and uh, so please stay tuned for other videos regarding multimedia but also much 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 more ciao ciao, ciao.